good morning to all of you good morning good morning uh, can i introduce so you thanks for coming on early. Good morning, thanks for coming early in the morning 10 o'clock is too early right no no yeah. on uh, a diwali day it, wait it's 8:30 for me right now 8:30 in the night right now yeah wow where are you america california california 8:30 okay not too bad where in california fairfield fairfield okay right, good so uh, should we go one round of introduction can i introduce you before we begin all this okay yeah uh, uh to all the kids who are here uh, he is one of the best scientists i have ever met no don't believe it is it is you know i was in my phd when i met him and uh, till then i did science i passed science but he introduced me to the actual science and he taught me that it is okay not to do science in a laboratory you can do science in many many ways if you're just passionate about it and he won the biggest science award that uh, india gives to a scientist and that's bhatnagar award and uh, he is the president of international union of biological sciences and uh, after 100 years of its establishment he is the first indian president and he heads a climate change project um with his team in that uh, international union of biological sciences he is the best i could get and i wanted to share with all of you my wonderful experience which i had with him and i'm sure all of you will enjoy the session today Yes, Shashi. Okay, I don't know how much you understood what she said. I will tell them again. Okay. No need to worry about all that, you know, awards and everything. Okay, so um, don't worry. I'm a, just a, a teacher, biology teacher, typically, or you can call me science teacher. If I teach in the school, I'll be a science teacher. If I teach in a college or a university, I'll be a biology teacher. currently i'm a teacher in a university and i also do some research and uh, that research is about how do we develop from a one small cell right all of us are born as small babies right so how babies are born they all start with one single you know what is a cell in, in the body you must have heard about cell rbcs white blood cells red blood cells right lung cells kind of a thing like that there are small small cells and we all started one cell right that one cell gives us all kinds of organs like this right so particularly i'm more interested in why do we get eyes only here why not is somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here why do we have ears only here right and this is the kind of research i do and that's the research i you know use variety of different types of techniques right and the techniques are what are known as laboratory based techniques some are just do research using internet in some cases do some data analytics those who do computer science those who know what is data analysis means right there's so much of data when it is there you can't use simply your calculator or your pencil and a paper to do all the analysis so you need computers you need big computer sometimes right so that's a kind of research i do but today anyway first we should know who you are can we some round of introduction hello krishna you can start krishna you want to introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce all of you i know all of them personally there are kids who attend my british council session krishna and dhruv are from vidyaranya school krishna is extremely interested in uh, einstein and theory of relativity and string theory and he okay. has talked about about it good and uh, dhruv is uh, in second standard in um, uh, vidyaranya he asks relevant questions whatever be the question 
and Katrina is very interested in climate change and she is also a Vidyaranya student. And uh, uh, then we have Rayansh and Aryan joining us from California. They are the grandchildren of uh, XIACT research director, uh, C.B. Lakshmi. Uh, she who always supports me in all my ventures. And uh, then I have Anu here with me. She loves anything. She loves life. She loves stories, she loves computers, she loves a science, she loves anything about life. And she loves her little brother. Then I have Ara, my sister's son. And uh, he doesn't like biology much. And probably he must have joined in to ask you, can we pursue further studies without biology? He likes uh, uh, all the other subjects, but he's not fond of biology. And then uh, I have Kamakshi, uh, again, uh, friend's daughter. And she's a little senior, but uh, she is interested in all my videos, <laughs> okay? And then I have Chinmayi and Ishanvi. Uh, they study at Kalpa School and uh, they also enjoy science a lot. Ishanvi is very young. She is in, uh, she is much younger, but she also asks relevant questions and she also enjoys science a lot. And Chinmayi wants to become a botanist the last time I knew. And then I have Sukaina. Uh, Sukaina is also from Vidyaranya and uh, Sukaina is also very interested in anything that happens. She loves craft and all, but she also likes science and all my story sessions. And then I have Anuradha Sridhar. She's the niece of uh, Guru Prasad and she's been with me for uh, quite a long time and she's a part of all my activities, whether it's for children or adults or whatever. So I had to have her in the show. She's Anuradha J. Sridhar. And uh, they are all the kids who support me in all my storytelling uh, ventures. So I love this crowd. I hope you will do. And then we have Maria Mali. Maria Mali is uh, Sukaina's cousin. She has joined from Delhi. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So you have people from you know, Hyderabad. Delhi and California, right? Bangalore. Our, uh, my sister's children joined from Bangalore. Bombay. Oh, wow. Okay. Good. And, uh, you know, nice to have you all here. And I uh, hope you will enjoy the session, with, you know, for an hour or so. What I'll do is we can start with, if you want, anybody wants to start with one question or I can say something or I can ask questions, right? And then accordingly, we can start. Okay, it will be very, very interactive. I'm not going to give you any big stories. I'm not a storyteller. I'm not a narrator. I'm not like Rohini Madam. Right? I'm only going to answer whatever I know. And okay. Anybody want to start or shall I start some with one question? So, can I pick a chit? And they said that I'll give them a chit, and uh, the first one who comes asks the question so that we'll have order and not chaos. Oh, Chinmayi, Chinmayi, it's your turn to go. Oh, poor Chinmayi. Where is she? <laughs> there. And here. Chinmayi, do you have any question? No. No, okay. I will pick one more. Okay, let me ask some question. Okay, so I, I guess some kids are, uh, I mean, who is the oldest here? Ninth or 10th grade? Uh, Aram so, is old and Kamakshi. Which grade they are? Sir, I'm in 10th. You are in 10th, okay. Yes, sir. So for you, it will be very, very, very basic, Kamakshi. And Aram, I don't know which... Uh, Standard is. I am in ninth grade. You are in ninth grade. It will be very basic for you also, but you know you should help others to, you know, sort of understand. If if I am not very good in explaining to small kids, okay. So let me first ask a simple question to all the kids. You must have all seen stars every day in the night. I know, of course. Sometimes you go outside the cities when there are no street lights, when there are no other city lights, you will see lots of stars, right? Uh, other than moon, right? 
without looking at the moon let's say only look at the stars let's say it's a new moon day what is new moon day for example today is a new moon day right why it's called new moon day it's only it's super curved like what like that the moon is the the moon in the in the cycle of moon becoming cycle. larger and larger and then becoming a full moon day and then it starts receding and then it become the smallest in that cycle the starting point when you don't see a moon is a new moon day hmm. new moon day is a day when actually you don't see the moon yeah. right so today is a new moon day you don't see let's say any moon if you go outside the city you will see lots of stars can you tell me which star is closest to us Yes. Oh, Druva star. Which one? Druva star. Krishna, you can also answer. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't hear. Druva star. Uh, Which star is closest to us? No, he has said. Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri. Krishna says. Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri. How do you know it's closer? Can you see when there are when there are so many stars? Let's say you you. How do you know that is closest to us? Can you actually see that? For example, you know, Krishna. If you look back, right, there are so many things. There is a bookshelf I can see. There is a wall. Which is closest to you, bookshelf or the wall? The bookshelf is closer. Bookshelf. You can make out the difference, right? Can you see the difference between Alpha Centauri and all other stars? If I tell you, no, it's some other star is closer. Andromeda is closer to us. Can you prove or disprove it? How do you know? I don't know. You don't know. Let's say you are, you know, standing on Jubilee Hills on the highest peak. Those are in Hyderabad or some, you know, hillock, and then you can see city, right? You can see some buildings closer to you, some buildings away from you, but you look at very, very far distance that you and I can reach, and there are so many buildings. Let's say tall buildings. Can you make out which is closer to you, which is away from you, among those buildings which are far away from? You? Why is that? No, oh, sir. Why can't you see things clearly, which is far away from us? Um, because our eyes can only go a certain amount of distance. Exactly. Good. You should get Surya. Should get a big prize. Okay. Right. Done. So our eyes actually are not designed to see things with that far. Right. It's designed just to see around us. Right. Let's say you are in a forest. You should know if there is a snake next to you, or a tiger next to you, or a, you know there's an apple tree or a mango tree around you, so that you can eat. Or you what to eat, or what not to eat, or where to go, where not to go. Only that kind of distance. If you continuously see everything, you will not be able to make a decision. Right? It will be very confusing seeing too many things. Right? We don't see too many things. We see only small things, number of things. Around us, right? That's how eyes are designed. Similarly, we can't see very, very small things. What is the smallest thing that you can see? A microorganism. Mm -hmm. Can you see microorganism? No, they're they're too microscopic. No. You need a microscope. Without microscope, what can you see? The smallest. And is it gas? Is it gas? And and. Hmm? Is it dust? Yeah. Someone is raising hands. Krishna says dust. Krishna says what? Dust. Dust. Duck. That's the smallest thing you can yes, see. Dust. Right? Dust. Okay. Anyway, the smallest okay. thing you can see is is around point. Five millimeter, right? 
it's called 500 micron, doesn't matter. It is, let's say if you have a, a ruler in your box, right? There's one centimeter. If you divide one centimeter into 100, it become 100. Sorry, if you divide into 1000, you'll get 1000 millimeter. Right? So meter to divide to thousand, you get thousand. So one centimeter is hundred millimeters. Right? So from hundred, it's no, ten no, millimeters. millimeters. See, I'm not a good scientist. So ten millimeters. If that each millimeter you further divide into half, right? That's typically what most of our eyes can resolve. Right? If there are two dots which are so close is less than half a millimeter distance. You can't see whether there are two dots or just one dot, right? Now that's the third question is time. If something happens really fast, right? What is the, you know, faster thing you can see? How much speed? Let's say if I move my hand, did you see my moving a hand? Okay, did you see why I moved my hand? Did you see now? Yes. I moved, it. Yeah. I moved it so fast you didn't even see. <laughs> I moved it. I actually hit my cheek <laughs> and then... Uh, you read Phantom, right? Phantom yeah. comics? Have you read? Yeah. Phantom is uh, faster than the light. Ooh, so I heard Phantom. Right brings his fist, hits someone, and takes it back. People wouldn't know that Phantom actually moved and hit someone. They actually, they will feel pain here. The villain, right? The bad person, he feels the pain here because Phantom would have hit him and he pitches so fast that the person wouldn't even see. You know why? Anything moves so fast, faster than anything which is 100 milliseconds. We can't see. If anything happens in less than 100 millisecond, our eyes can't see. Right? So, so three things. Three things. We can't see things which are really far away from us. Or we can't, even if we see, we can't see which one is closer, which is fast, farther away from us. Second is, we can't see things which are very small. We can't also see which are really fast occurring events. If that is the case, whatever we see with our eyes or whatever here with our ears, right? For example, hearing also, we can only hear certain sounds, right? What kind of sounds can you hear? Anybody? I think ninth and 10th standards, what, what, what decibel the levels the range? Sound of can. I can hear a because they are bursting crackers. Now it's... For example, bats continuously make sounds. Can you hear a bat making sound? No. No. It's called ultrasonic. Because we can't hear. That's why it's ultrasonic. Right? Without a radio, can you hear radio Wait, waves? Can't I hear the voice of a giraffe? Hmm? We can't hear the giraffe also. It's also very, very different decibel levels, right? It's an outside the range of what we can hear. Similarly, colors also. We can't see all colors, right? We can see certain colors. Anything from violet to red, we can see. We can't see infrared. We can't see ultraviolet, right? So, for example, yes. butterfly can see, you know, one butterfly will see another butterfly in a different color than what we can see. So the butterflies can see ultraviolet. Yeah. Katrina, unmute. Okay. Um, uh, also, snakes, snakes see infrared. Infra yes. Like for there what are many we... animals which can see infrared. There are many animals which can see ultraviolet, use ultraviolet light to see. If we see Whereas sound. Sound also. There are animals which can hear sounds which are outside our range of what we can hear. Yes, Surya. What is uh, infrared and ultraviolet? There are two different colors. You know that 
there are seven colors in your white color, right? Starting with white, uh, violet, and all the way up to red. Anything on your left side below the violet, we call as ultraviolet. Anything which is on the other side, we call as red. So it's it's infrared because if you use certain kind of techniques, what you see is still a red color. Similarly, in the ultraviolet, if you use certain techniques, what you see is still be a violet color. It's not any other color. That's why it's called ultraviolet. Don't worry about the details. Anyway, the reason I'm asking you all this question is, now we know you have a video camera, you have a mobile phone, you have telescope, you have microscope. You know there are many things what we see with our eyes, right, is not true, is not the real picture of the world, right? Let's say you are in 16th century or 15th century, right? You are in 15th century. At that time, there were no microscope, there were no telescope, there were no video camera, there were no mobile phones. What do you think they would have seen the world as? What kind of world they would see? Surya yes. and only the world we see to them. Or the scientist? No, no, I ordinary person. Don't worry about the scientist. Uh -huh. Shashi, there's somebody waiting. Can you accept? I'm sorry. I, I, I yeah, I included. Yeah. I just saw that. See, what's happening is it's in the other computer. Okay. I. So now there's no one waiting. Okay. Thanks. Um, what do people what do people see it as just like regular colors and no no like super small things let's or say let's say Emperor Akbar or Emperor Ashoka. What kind of world they would have seen and are this the same as what we are seeing today? Would it be a different world or the same world? It would be a different world. Be different world. Why do you think it's different world? Do you think they would have seen moon or sun or uh, stars or tree or in a different way than what we are seeing? Won't have computers and different things we won't have. Such um, high technology. Tell Krishna. Krishna, you haven't unmuted. Uh, yeah, because the lives weren't easier because of many new inventions. You have to speak loudly. About science. Krishna, you have to speak loudly. I can't hear you. And then no. less technology also. Uh, because people didn't have any machines or anything to make their lives easier and uh, they didn't know much about science. And they didn't have enough technology. Okay, let's say today you you today you decide in in the night or even the evening you are not going to use mobile phone you are not going to use video camera you are not going to use anything just go outside and want to see what are the things let's say you go to a forest or you go and look at the stars in the oh. night do you think emperor ashoka what he had seen and what you are seeing would be different or the same it's the same it's the same I think it would be a bit different because our, our eyes are so used to the screen. It may be a bit different than what we see. It would be different. Be different. Be different. Of course, there will be some difference. For example, if you see a city, there, today's city is different than uh, the Magad city in which he was ruling or Akbar was in Delhi, right? Or Nagra. But what I'm asking you is what you see in the natural things. A mountain, Himalayas, or or a tree, right? So it's the same. Only thing is our understanding is different, right? A time of um, Ashoka, Rakbar, they would have seen the stars and thinking that all the stars are in the same distance from us. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a bed sheet with small small dots, shining dots, right? They are all in the same distance, or they would have seen that you know. Nothing can move faster than their horse. Nothing can, uh, you know, see, which is nothing can be there, which is smaller than what they can see. So their understanding of the world would be different than what we are understanding. Because you, from your textbook, you know much more than 
what Ashoka knew or Akbar knew. Right? Although your own eyes is exactly the same as Ashoka's eyes or Akbar's eyes, you would have seen exactly the same way as Ashoka or Akbar, but you have a different understanding of the world because your textbook says something different. Yes, Rohini. Aristotle thought that there was nobody surviving on the other side of the earth because he did not know about gravity. He thought people could only stand upright. So he thought that only in the hemisphere that he was living, people were there and all of them on the other side of the earth would fall down. That was Aristotle's understanding of the earth. So that is based on what is known as logic. Right? So let's say you look at a flat surface, right? There are no hills, there are no ocean, nothing, right? And then you can see as much as you can see. As I told you, you can't see very, really, very far things. After some time, you see that there is no nothing mm -hmm. after the edge. There is no called edge of the earth. Okay, you think that, okay, there may be an edge of the earth in another four or five kilometers. You start walking. As Socrates start walking and walking and walking, or Aristotle. They looked at them. It's still another little bit distance. They thought, okay, it's very tiring. I don't want to go. But they will assume. They make an assumption. It's not a true picture. They think, that, okay, maybe if I'm able to walk very long distance, sometime Earth will be, there will be end of Earth. I'm going to fall down. Right? Because I don't want to go and fall down. At the same time, I also can't walk that distance. Those are the times when, you know, Walking long distances was anyway difficult, or going that long distances, not walking. So they would not have tried. Even if they tried, anyway, they would be, you know, proved wrong, right? Anyway, so I'm going to show this picture. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. What is the picture I'm showing you? Uh, what, what are these three? You're showing the sun. So look at the small earth dots. And and the earth. Earth. One is earth. earth. You can make out the earth very easily. And then... Moon, earth and the sun is like sun. The sun, sun. is so far okay. away from the earth. And the now, moon... So the moon... Which is larger? Sun is larger, earth is larger, and moon is larger. Earth is larger. This earth is larger. In the picture. But in real life, the sun, sun is larger. But it looks smaller because it's very far away. It's very far away. And, it only, and the light only takes eight minutes to get to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now which one is moving around which? Is the Earth moves around the sun or sun moves around the Earth? Earth, Earth moves around the sun. Have you seen it? Around the sun. Have you seen it? No. No. Sir. no. 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 Who has seen it? Yes. It's yeah. just a kind of theory or something. Maybe it's a theory. It's a the theory. Space but who? So like, it's like a hypothesis. Oh. It's a hypothesis. So it's not true, is it? It may not be true. It, it is true, but we, we... Then if it is an hypothesis, it can. it's only an assumption. If it is a theory, typically we say it is true. Hypothesis is an assumption. Can we say satellites? Satellite pictures saw it or spaceships saw it? No, but they'll have to be around for a lot of years. It takes one. I mean, they'll have to. So, be how would you, for example, let's say if you want to see your entire house, right? I mean, although you can't see from all four sides, let's say you want to see the bigger house. Where do you go? You go outside the house. Can you see your own house? being inside your house. No. Right. You can see only a room or a living room or a kitchen, whatever it is. But you want to see your house from outside, right? How it looks, whether it is one bedroom, two bedroom, it's one terrace, two terraces, whether it is square, whether it is a rectangle, right? Or it's a, an oblong shaped, a round shaped. To get a picture of your house, right? Or what is outside your house, whether it is closer to another house or there is a garden around your house, you need to go outside your house to see that, right? Similarly, 
if you want to know whether earth moves around the sun or sun moves around the earth you have to go outside the solar system right yeah so no yes. one actually has seen it no one in the world has ever seen it is the earth which moves around the sun and every day what we see with our own eyes you you say that sun is rising from the east it sets in the west you move you say that sun is moving sun is moving now towards the west after 12 o'clock you say now sun is moving towards the west right so or you say sun is rising when the morning you say sun is rising all the way up to 12 o'clock and then it starts falling right so is the sun which is moving around us why do you think is the earth which moves around just because your textbook says is it because um because earth turns when the it's turning on the sun and the earth turns too so each part of the earth at some point gets light from the sun and when the, on the side that has light on the other side it's dark and it's it's night but you can have the same thing same sun thing. is so small it moves around and it goes other side of the earth so that side of the earth becomes bright and this side of the earth becomes dark you don't need the earth moving around the sun to have night and day right right let's say i have big ball am earth small light sun is coming it's moving around us and it comes here you see that sun is so small so the reason i'm saying you is of course it is a sun with a sorry earth which moves around the sun earth sun is much larger than earth but still we see day and night we see for example if it is so large the light source right then earth should be there should not be any day and night in the earth all the time right because there's so much of light coming all around because of the distance earth is also very large and the sun is such a long distance it cannot light up the earth on all surfaces at the same time mm. sometime it is in california it is night sometime it is in hyderabad it is night right it day and night changes every 12 hours around the earth right now the the reason i'm mentioning all of these thing is what science is all of you think that science is physics biology your biology is boring physics is interesting chemistry is boring or chemistry is more interesting because you want to know what is gold right you want to make gold out of iron right or you think that oh biology is very interesting i want to know why coronavirus you know goes inside the lung why you know kills the lung first why not the brain why not the eye right but whatever it is the science is the way of knowing something science is not physics science is not chemistry science is not biology or not earth science it is the way of knowing something because all of us know one thing because we hear something we read something we see something right or we smell something you smell something and say that oh this is mango smell this is vanilla smell this is a you know strawberry smell and kind of stuff right so similarly whatever we see beyond our own personal understanding and if we can prove that that is the true world and that method is called science science is a way of knowing something right using variety of different methods people discovered copernicus kepler galileo and all that it is the earth which moves around the sun not the other way around they also showed in which you know axis they moves around in, for example earth is moving around with a tilt of axis many of you those who are in 8th and 9th and 10th standard they know what is earth axis is tilted means right it's an oblong shape you know the uh, the path it's not a circular path around the, the around the sun right so all the physical is covered is the wealth of scientific methods and that scientific method there are two ways of looking at this one is using logic using deduction using mathematics like newton used calculus to prove his 
hypothesis. Now they are laws of Newton, we call laws of motion, right? Then there is another method which uses technology, telescope, microscope, video camera, right? Or you want to smell something. These days, you know, everybody is talking about coronavirus, right? The COVID. So one of the symptoms of coronavirus is you lose smell. You ask your anybody who had coronavirus, you know, infection, they will tell you for some time they didn't, couldn't smell anything. So how do you know, you know, there's a problem? There is now a smelling machine also you can get, right? So you can actually use a variety of different kinds of techniques to understand a world which is different than what we normally can hear, see, smell, right? Or touch, right? This is why, this is what's called science. Shashi, okay. there's a girl waiting. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. That's why I wanted you to be the host. So that I keep an eye on her. You missed it. Okay. Because I mentioned something about COVID, let's talk about COVID. Because everybody, you're all bored sitting in the sport at home, all the time learning on computers, yeah. rather than going to school, play with your own friends. And right? You. You're all bored sitting at home, right? Yeah, same. No. And also your parents must be really feeling true. very cursing the whole thing. You know, why are these kids are all the yeah. time at home? We, there's so much of noise at home, right? All the time. They also want some free time for themselves. It looks like that. Anyway, so I don't want to explain all about coronavirus. I just want to ask you a few things, which basically connects you to what we need to do. It's so small virus, it's smaller than bacteria, right? It's, you know, for example, one, something which is very small, which you can't see, right? Then unless you use technology, there's no meaning to say that it is smaller than this, smaller than that. It's like, you know, which star is bigger? With, with our eyes, we can't see anyway any star which is more than a small dot, right? With our naked eye. So it doesn't matter Andromeda is larger or Alpha Centauri is larger or some other long distance, you know, some, you know, star is much, much larger. How does it matter for us? Because we can't anyway see that. But with the help of technology, one can make out. Viruses are very, very small particles, right? And this is the virus which causes the, the COVID disease that we are you know, all sure. suffering, right? And because of which everything is now stuck. Oh, thanks, right? for the Schools thanks. are closed and everything. Right? Now, why is it called coronavirus? Because when you see under microscope, you see uh, some kind of a, you know, you know what's a corona? Because it looks like a crown. It looks like a crown. It's a crown, and, right? and it's a virus. It's made up of flowers. You know, you know, many times, for example, whenever you you know people go to it's not only really a crown, it's also can be kind of you know a, a, a wreath of flowers, you know, something which is normally you go and see and put it in the graveyard many times, you know, in the formal occasions, people do that, right? The big, big flowers, they make this kind of one. So it will if you look at from uh, using an electron microscope, you see this kind of a structure. So that's why it's called coronavirus, which is anyway we can't see it our eyes, nothing. But using methods of science, people know so much about it, right? Like within three months, we came to know so much about it. So we know what we should do, what we should not do, right? To protect ourselves. Now, for example, we know how it spreads. Right. Whenever someone exhales, that is, or if someone I'm infected, let's say with coronavirus, I may not have any symptoms, but I'm, let's say I'm still carrying the virus. Whenever I exhale, exhale means throwing out the air from the lung, right? Inhalation is taking the air to our inside our lung. Exhales, something comes out. Or if you sneeze, right? Or if you cough, right? This virus come out. Now, there's an interesting point, right? When something comes out of me, let's say, you know, you, uh, your mother makes or father makes a very nice food, right? It smells very nice, right? You are coming from the school. Whenever there was a school, 
you know, if you remember, there was a, something like school and you used to come home from school. And then as you, you get down from your vehicle near at home, let's say you have a, a compound and then you open the gate, you start smelling something, very nice smell. Maybe your father is back, mother is back and messed up, made some nice food, right? But as you go closer and closer to your home, you smell more and more of it, right? Do you, don't you see? Let's say it's dosa, masal dosa, right? You can get some smell of a dosa, but as you go closer and closer to the kitchen, you get more and more of it smell. But do you actually see the smell? No. Can anybody see the smell? No. But you can feel oh. it, right? Smell it. So these smell is also because of small particles, which is coming out of your dosa. Those particles are so small, you can't see it, right? But your nose can detect it. You have the ability to detect such small particles and smell the, the, the nice you know, aroma of dosa or coffee. Similarly, these particles are so small, you can't see it, but closer to the person who has infection, more will be those particles. Away from that person, smaller is the number of particles. It's like your dosa smell, right? Or if it, let's say it's a bad smell. What you do, you go as far away from that place because closer to that place, let's say there is something happened. Let's say a dog died near your house. It will be very, very, you know, st stinking smell. But you move away from that place, you will see, you will get some smell of it or you want to go as away for a minute. Let's say 10 feet, 20 feet. Let's say if I'm away from 20 feet from that place, I don't get any smell, you're happy. Yeah. Similarly, if someone is infected, if they are six feet away from you, the particles will be so small in number, so fewer in number, you may not get an infection. That's why people say, to maintain six feet distance between two people. Physical distancing, you heard about physical distancing. Every day they are talking about it, right? Social distancing, physical distancing. I use the word physical distancing. I don't want to use the social distancing. You should be still friendly with everybody, but you maintain physical distance. Social distancing means you even cut down your social distance, you know, talk to each other. No longer friends. So, the closer to your someone, there are more chances that you will have some particles of virus coming to you. Away from that person, the chances are less because there will be so few particles. So you can see here, right? The number of particles will be smaller and smaller as you go away from that person. Now, so first thing, because you, the way you, for example, by mistake, you are with someone, you inhale, I, for example, I inhale, let's say, the particles go. Where do they go first? They go to the lung first, right? And that's where they cause some problem. Then all kinds of symptoms. First symptom is breathlessness and all those things come, right? All these things were discovered within three months, right? Without, not because of the technology that was available. 100 years ago, when similar kind of virus infection started, people didn't know that there was, it was virus. There was nothing was known that it was virus. But it was very difficult to do anything about it. Millions of people died at that time. This time, we all protecting ourselves, right? And now what we do, we maintain physical distancing from each other. All of us wear masks, right? Wearing masks is not only if I'm, I may not know that I'm infected. I may pass it on to someone else. But if I wear mask, I will protect. But if I'm not infected, someone else is infected. If I wear mask, I won't get infection. So everybody should wear mask. Whether you're infected or not infected, how do you know whether you're infected or not infected? So wearing mask is always good, right? And maintaining physical distancing. So that's why all these things have been discovered within no time. And now we are practicing all of these things. Although there are still many, many people uh, who are infected, some people died, but still very, very small number compared to what if we didn't know any of these things. That's what science helps to save lives. For example, the other thing people keep talking, right? Everybody says, you know, wash your hands with soap. You keep hearing on the television, your parents tell you, wash your hands with soap. 
you know, use detergent, right? Sanitizers. If you are outside or at home, you use water, you know, wash for long time your hands, right? Or your face, everything. The reason is very simple, right? This coronavirus is like our, like, you know, if, if you look at, you know, your football, your football is made up of one layer of some rubber material, right? Let's say you have two layers of such material inside, right? There's, let's say, you imagine a ball which has two layers of, you know, rubber. Between two layers of rubber, there's a gap. So in coronavirus is made up of such two layers of, you know, some material called protein. Between those two gaps, there is full of oil. We call it as lipids, chemical. Its name is lipids. It is like oil that's material, right? So if, 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 you know, oil spills in your, what do you do normally? What do you do? Oil spill? You wash it. What do you do? Wash it. Water wash. You wash it. Sleeping. Wake up time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you something. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Is he What is this? Is it my name? Right? So what did you see? The kid spilled lots of whatever that was on his shirt. And this, the mom did this did this ad thingy was saying, this is how you do it. You just get this and then you put it on that and then you do this and then do that. Okay. Basically, what you saw was that boy's clothes was full of oil. Right? And all other chili, turmeric, and every kind of one, it was sticking on the oil on the shirt. And then they cleaned it with the help of soap. That means soap can remove oil. When it removes oil, it removes everything which is sticking to the oil also. Right? That's how you clean your body, you know, clothes. The detergent, the soap, can remove oil from the surfaces. Similarly, in your hand, for example, you have got oily, right? You eat something, very nice food with your hands, right? Do you people eat with hands or you always use spoons and fork? I eat with hands. We use hands. Tasty food always should be eaten with hands, right? If you don't like, you use spoons. When you eat with hands, your hand becomes oily sometimes. You just wash your hands with water, it will not go. What do you do? You put some soap. So similarly, if you put some soap, because this virus has some oil-like material on the surface, that removes the oil virus and you can get rid of the oil from your surface. You can't see it, but science has proved that it works because there are methods, like there are very different methods of science we can use to show that coronavirus kind of viruses can be removed from your hand by washing hands with soap. There is some sound. Should I? No, all of you mute your mics, please. No, it's from the scientist's other computer. Oh, oh sorry, yes. Thanks. Uh, yeah, when yes, he was showing own. the advertisement, it auto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, Colgate brush brush song. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I think I, I didn't stop it. Okay. Now I stopped it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it stopped. Thank you. No, no, I didn't start it. <laughs> Me too. No, no, it's not mine. Uh, it's not mine either. Who, who's? Stop now. Anybody okay. is playing a trick for waking all the others up. Stop it. Okay. No, no, no. It's fine. It's right. It, I think it's stopped. Okay. And all of you turn your videos on. Soumya and uh, Surya, Sukaina, Mariam. I'll just take one screenshot so that I'll send it to you. What? 
My video is on, but it's pretty dark. Let me turn on the light. Okay. Maybe after five minutes. Is that okay. is this better? So, yeah. uh, quickly, we are already now close to 11 o'clock. Some more time. So, I'll do a couple of small, small things which you mean only 9th and 10th standard kids here may have read in the, in the school. Right? Some new topic. How many moths you see here in this picture? Two. Two moths. They're using camouflage. Where, where are the two moths? One Which is camouflaged inside white color, other oh, is black. There's a small outline of the one which is color, colored, which is camouflaging. Okay. Black light. How many you see now? Two, obviously. Two. Okay. But they're not camouflaged. Right? It's the same two moths. Why are they look, looking different now, here and there? What's the difference between the two pictures? The wall. Because they're using camouflage. One is um one is black on white stuff. It doesn't. It's not camouflaging. But on the tree, it's um um camouflaging. But on the for the white one, it's not camouflaging on the tree. But the for the on the sand, the white one is camouflaging. Okay, now it's the back. You can you can see two ways of looking at. It. You can ask, what is the moth doing? You say moth is camouflage, right? Let's say you are not a moth. You are a bird. You want to eat that moth, right? So what the bird would bird wouldn't know what the moth is doing. So which one do you think the bird will see? What's the probability that it will see the, the, black one. Black one. the black one? The higher probability is the back, black one. So let's say the bird with birds will see mostly the black ones. After two months, which one will have more in number? Which moth? The white the one. one. The white one. Okay. Now let's say the same two moths, same kind of moths. There are two types of moths, black and the white motley one, pepper, pepper moth you call. Right. Now the let's say tree bark is black. Right? The same tree, but it became black for some reason. Don't worry, why? Now bird which you see will which one? The white one. The white one. The white one. Yeah. Okay. Now which number will go up? The black one. Yeah, the, black. the black one. Okay. Now as you can see here, there is a white moth, black moth, and let's say bird. Right? There are three things here. And then the tree. There are two types of trees background. One is white background, another is a black background. Now the you are the the number of moths, which one goes up, which comes down, down, depends on what now. Um, Is it because of the birds? Okay. Birds are trying to find the black one, or it's because of moths avoiding the birds? What determines Is it because of the number of black versus white? The background. The background. The background. It's there. Right? So as you can see here, this is what there is a you know, you know I don't know how many of you heard word called evolution. It's another theory, or in science, like you know laws of motion, special theory of relativity, Einstein's, right? You know, uh, heliocentric theory that is with the Earth which moves around the sun. These are all theories which has proven to be how the world is like. Right, the natural world. Similarly, the biological world, to understand what the world is, why there are certain kinds of species you see, certain kinds of animals, certain kinds of plants, certain kinds of you know, snakes, why there are so much of you know similarities between us and monkeys, or why there is no much difference between us and a tree, or is there a similarity between us and a tree? Right? Who is closer to us? Right? All of these things are studied. In, in a branch of science called evolution, right? Now, here, as you can make out, what determines many times is very complex. Only science can tell using methods of science, right? You one could say that, oh, birds must be really struggling to find that black moth 
to eat the black uh, in this case uh, sorry uh, in this case right and because they cannot you know they don't have a if they have some problem in the eye they can't see black they must be eating the white one right it's not what birds think of what birds can see right it's alone is not enough also many many factors determine this in this case it's you know they must have heard that you know organism struggle to survive right it's, it's not struggling the moth is exactly the same in this case the black survives in this case the white survives right so they are exactly the same the background changes their ability to survive right so this is how one should understand the natural world let me try another example mm, right which we think you can think right what is thinking you all think oh, that yeah. you can think okay. what is thinking thinking how, is how do i know that you are thinking let's let's start with that question when your mind stretching you are scratching your head that means you are thinking stretching how okay how do i know that you are thinking how do i know that you are thinking you know you are thinking because something is going on in your mind or you think oh it's is boring when is it getting over i want hungry i want to go and eat some diwali food i have to go and play with my friends you know when you're thinking when you're just looking at straight and then you you just keeping a straight face and you're looking at something straight and not blinking uh, that much like this okay that's more like staring what is the easier way to test if someone is thinking or not ask them when they keep looking at the roof and they don't know the answer expression <laughs> when they express it out the only way it can is looking at their behavior right response let's say you show them some chocolate they, they are just looking at you you show them chocolate they look at exactly the same way right then how do you know they are thinking or not right but if they say i want chocolate can you give me a piece of chocolate or they want to come and you know take the entire chocolate then you know they are thinking they are thinking because they can see chocolate they know they want to eat chocolate they like chocolate they know that you have the chocolate and they may ask knowing that you may give but if they already know that you are not going to give even if they ask they want to come and you know snatch sort of snatch it right so that means you know they are thinking so how do you know an animal is thinking every day you see house flies in your house right mosquitoes do you know they are thinking can you think? so in science you can even do experiments to know whether even animals can think or not right so here is a walking insect it can walk right but now what you do is you when it's walking you create a small gap right it's like you know you are you are walking on a on a place where there is suddenly a small hole you know pothole or some yeah what you do is you take a longer step and you cross it right and see what this does can you see it's moving yes no right it crossed right in a anyway it happens it really fast you are your eye cannot see this how fast it can do it this is a video camera it's taken a high speed video camera 1000 frames per second it's called right that means it can divide the second into 1000 small parts and each part you can see it separately now we are running it slowly in movie they show right sometime they move very slowly right so this is how it it's shown it's not like you are uh, you know cartoons cartoon everything is happens fast mm. right but in, in movies in, in adult you know we see there are kind of movies which things which slowly because our brain doesn't think much we can't you know properly see things properly so we always want it slowly right so villain comes slowly the hero comes slowly right the kids comes slowly 
Whereas in cartoons, everything happens fast because you are very smart kids. You can, you know, see things really, really fast. Anyway, now, okay, this happened. But how do you know it is thinking? What you do is, you give, you make the insect keep it away for some time for any food. That means it, it can't, it doesn't have any food for, let's say, for a few hours. It's hungry. Then you keep some food on the other side, which normally the same insect eats. You now it knows its food. It can, you know, it because it's hungry, it has to go towards the food. Right? Now what you do is, you do this experiment to many, many times. Then what you do is, you increase the width of this gap and see what it does. In this time, the insect is coming from the other side. Oh. <laughs> it fell down. So you must be thinking, oh, it can't even think. It, it, because it wants to have food, it only knows that it, there is food. It has to eat the food. It just wants to go. It can't think that, you know, it has to cross this. It cannot cross whether it can. But would you do this? If it is a very long distance, we'll ask you to jump. Will you jump? Because you can think. You will say, oh, no, no. If I jump this distance, I can't jump. I may, you know, break my legs. I don't want to do it. If right. I was running for my life, maybe. Sorry. If I was running for my life from this guy that that this guy that tried to hit me with a stick, then I would try. <laughs> with the stick? Like they hold the they first hold the stick a little slanting, and then they suddenly drop the stick and they fly and they jump, anyway. and they take and they leave the stick and they. So now. The, sometimes it happens that you also make mistakes. Let's say it's three feet or five feet. You, sometimes you make a mistake and sometimes you also fall down whenever you're trying to cross. You know, in rainy season, there was so much of rain in Hyderabad recently. There, every road was full of water, right? You had to jump to cross the water, small, small ponds and everything. Sometimes you fall in, sometimes you manage to cross because you calculate, you know, whether I can cross or can't cross. And sometimes you make mistakes. Even adults make mistakes. We think we can cross, but sometimes we fall in. Now what you do is you increase it further. Right? In this case, the distance is increased further. Your insect is hungry because it is not eaten for several hours. And there is food on the other side. Right? And see what it does. It's running. It, it, video is showing it very, very slowly. Because you want to know, can you even say it is thinking? So what happened? It didn't yes, go. It stopped. Katrina is saying something. Go it, went ahead. it went away. Went back, not went away. It didn't make an attempt. It didn't even make an attempt to cross. It's not that it went away with after making an attempt and say I couldn't do it and went back. Many times dogs do, right? They make an attempt to you know snatch something or drag something. If they can't, then after some time they go away. Tigers do that. You know, tigers try to kill, you know, a spray and sometimes it can't and it chases for some time and then it stops and they say, oh, it can't do it and then it goes back. Here it is, didn't even make an attempt. But if you look at here, the speed at which it was coming in the beginning, right? And then the last part was much slower. Look at this. I know it's relatively slow, but but the later part is even slower. It comes closer to the edge of the gap. It looks at the gap and then wait for some time as if it's thinking whether I can cross or can't cross. 
And okay, no, it's not worth. I'm not going to cross. If I try to cross, I may break my legs. Then it slowly goes. It looks back once more because it's hungry. It wants to eat. So it thinks again, should I try make an attempt or not? Of course, I'm imagining all this thinking. But at least we know for sure. We don't know how, it, how much it's thinking, what is thinking. It may not be thinking in the same language I'm thinking, right? Or you are thinking. But at least you can prove that this insect can think. What is doing it? Even if it is hungry, even if there's a food, it's visible outside. Because the gap is so large, it cannot cross, whether it can cross or can't cross. It knows. How does it know? Because it knows its body size. It's like all of you know, right? For example, if I ask you to go and switch, you know, light in your uh, room currently, for example, uh, mm. who is this? Kamakshi. Uh, you, your switch is right behind your, in the wall. Can you actually touch it now? Okay, it's very close. But for some people, it, it might be that close. You may have to take one step. Some people, it may have to take two steps. But you know exactly. You need to take one step, two steps. You don't have to go and take a measurement of how many steps you have to take. Right? Because your body, your, your brain can actually calculate distances. But not exact distances. It won't say it's two feet, six inches. It says... I need one step, two step, or one step and I have to stretch my body or two step and stretch my head arm like this. So this insect also can actually calculate distances because it knows this is not crossable. Same insect, if you put it on this, it will cross. It will immediately does this. I mean, it's a way it speech. It comes very quickly, starts even stretching its body and trying to go on the side. It's not even thinking here. Right? Because it can calculate that quickly. Like all of us, we do that, right? So it, this is what thinking is. An insect can think. It's just that we don't know that they can think. Or we didn't know that they can think because we didn't know how to even know how, whether they think or not. They can also take quick decisions. You Look can at put a flight, flight red instead of crossing with its legs. Say it again. The insect could have used its wings and fly it through the gap. No, no, it's not. It's a walking insect, I told you already. The reason it's walking insect is there are no wings to this. Of course, it's still called fly in, in technical terms, but it's not a flying fly. It's a walking fly. <laughs> Look at this. I don't know how many of you can actually see this. It's a very short distance. It can definitely go. Did you see what happened? Actually, did anybody? We almost fell and down, and, but it, it yes. caught himself, and he and he was walking back, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, I was so, I I just my life and my life just flashed before my eyes." It actually somersaulted, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly, because it was it almost slipped. And immediately it changed its, uh, you know, action, right? How quickly it took. Without thinking, you can't do all of these things, right? So you can think really fast. All of us do that. We all think very fast. We don't know that we think that fast, right? It happens really, really fast, right? That's how we avoid all the accidents, many things that happens in the road, right? Because of it, we can think really fast, right? Okay. How much time do you have? Actually, it was supposed to end by less oh. like 30. So there's 20 minutes. Tell the kids, tell me, allow the kids to ask you questions. Okay, uh, ma'am. Anybody wants to ask some question? Otherwise, I want to show some more movies. Okay. I have two more movies to show after this. Manasi has planned, a, Mittu has planned a question for you. He didn't reveal it to me. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, quickly. Can you tell me how you can, I want, I also want to do a similar research like how you do. So. Hmm. How, how to do that? How do you slow down those videos? Kind of? <laughs> and the technology. And how do you, 
um, I would I also would like to do this kind of work that you do when I grow up. I was planning I had an ambition to kind of revive extinct animals back to life. So I was planning to first dig their fossils and see if I can do it or not. So how do you how do you bring extinct How do you develop okay. Drosophila? No, how do you bring extinct animals back to life? So many questions. Yeah. Okay. So two things. How do I do what I do or how do you can do what I do? So one thing is you obviously need to study. We first all of us whatever we do we do based on what is already known. Right? Discovery is not happens out, you know, in vacuum. Invention doesn't happen in vacuum. So right? All of it we actually we build on already known knowledge right you know newton said something all of you i don't know how many of you know about this sentence statement he made if i can see farther because i was standing on the shoulders of giants he said yeah. right because before me there were kepler there were galileo there are copernicus they showed so much about the world and i was standing on them then i can see farther it's like you know if you want to see something far what do you do in a, in a in a forest or in a even in this one you go and stand on the top of a tree so you can see one farther because otherwise your eyesight is blocked by so many trees around you or it could be a hill it could be even a when a small you know rock can block your uh, view if you are you know at the ground level so what you do is you go to a higher point so that you can see farther distances right so similarly what Newton said, I'm standing on the shoulders of the giants. Then means other scientists who discovered so many things before me. Because of it, I could see a little bit more than them. So we need to study. So you go to, after the school, you go to college. If you're interested in biology, you study biology. If you're interested in genetics, you study genetics in biology. And then you do PhD. During PhD, you can do all of these kind of work. Or even in your college, you know, in your school, if you have some free time in summer and there's no lockdown, there's no physical distancing, all those things, the coronavirus is all gone, then you can go to CCMB in Hyderabad or some other place and you can actually spend one or two months in someone's lab, do small, small experiments with the help of other students, senior students in the institute. Okay. That's how you can start. Now, the other question you said, you want to bring life to dead fossils you can't are you right it's irreversible death is irreversible you will understand this later when you study it's all in fiction that you can bring life to dead animals or dead snakes or plants death is end of life of that particular organism right so it's irreversible so I okay Okay. Any questions? Anybody else? Krishna, do you have a question? No? There are so many people. Bunny, uh, Ananya, do you have a question? Ananya, you told me you had a question. Where is she? Uh, she logged off. Anuhya, Anuhya, do you have a question? Here, it's this month. Krishna has. I have a question in chemistry. Okay. Yes. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Yeah, why is zinc carbonate insoluble in water? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so scientists doesn't mean that they would know everything. It means many things these days, there is so much to in earlier days, the what was known was all in one or two books, one could understand. But now so many things are known. The easier it is, just go to the internet and find out. Yeah. Surya, uh, one second, Shashi. Surya, Surya. Is your grandma around or has she slept? Uh, sorry, Shashi. Anyway, grandma... here some Dhruv is asking, raising his hand. Dhruv or Krishna? Ah, Krishna. Yeah. Krishna. Yeah. Ma'am, we have a question for you one minute. Professor, uh, I'm very thrilled. Uh, actually, it has been a learning to me also. I don't know about okay. the kids, but I, it Thank was very interesting. Much. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> I didn't realize that you were also listening to me. Yeah, very much. I was very keenly listening 
and they were, they were very interesting in fact it was like brushing up the school knowledge yeah. and so many things which has really i forgotten during this time lakshmi ma'am okay katrina katrina wants to ask a question one student has a chemistry question if you can take it a little later no it's okay i mean chemistry question doesn't mean that i don't answer unless if i know even biology also ha, you know, 90% i would know um cp ma'am is from iisc kids students. are so smart these days okay katrina go ahead you have a question yeah. is it easy to make can you make your own robot somehow make your own robot me look like us clone you mean a robot do looks like me or just make our own robot you can make Yes, These days, you we know. go to you know, you know, uh, any like you know, if you go to okay. an engineering college, the many kids they make robot, small small robot, cleaning robot, this robot, that robot, kind of stuff. Krishna, you want to ask? In fact, uh, one of my students, who is actually a biology student, made a small robot to cut the grass in the in the lawn. Recently. anybody can make a robot these days build one rather may not make it build one yes so uh, when we are eating when we eat so the epiglottis it gets closed by its own it doesn't it when we start eating mm -hmm. yeah so how does it get to know kya we have started eating or hand gets closed closed down Oh, very right. fantastic question. So it's actually not that it knows anything; it's only a mechanical process, right? So, for example, you know the the pressure, for example, right? If you cycle wall, right? When you put air from outside, there's so much of pressure when it's going. The 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 flap there is a flap kind of a thing. It it sort of opens like this, and the air can go. let's say you stop there there is more pressure inside the tube compared to the outside outside is what's called one you know what unit of pressure you call let's say atmospheric unit of pressure inside there will be more pressure in the tube because of which this flap is always in the closed position you cannot open or close it right it's only mechanical it's not that this valve is thinking that air is coming in i have to open or i air should not go out i have to keep it closed or anything right it's simply a mechanical process similarly your walls are all mechanical processes whenever we open your mouth and put something in your one and that mechanical process automatically closes the the airways so that the food doesn't go to the airways but if you eat fast sometimes because you also have to breathe all the time right you have to can't keep the airways very closed for very long time so what happens is it keeps opening and closing keeps opening only something it can make mistake and that mistake sometimes the food can go to airways and you start you know coughing and sneezing so we should be yeah krishna how how can you how i mean how do we know say it again krishna you muted yourself ha huh. how can we calculate distances in space I couldn't hear. Roini, can you? He asked, "How do we? How can we calculate distances in space?" Oh, how? <laughs> so it's actually the same way that we calculate. So only problem is you cannot go on taking your, you know, a tape, a you know, measuring tape, and say, "Okay, one feet, two feet, or one meter, two meter, and kind of thing." It's a very long, long distances. So long distances, you need some other method. Yeah. So even here, in for example, if you these days, earlier days, you used to use long chains or long tapes to measure distances like hundred feet, two hundred feet, and all. But now what they do is they use what is known as laser light. You you all have used a laser pointer, you know, right? In your teachers' yes. use in the classroom, you take a laser pointer, and there are now measurements which is tapes which actually are nothing but a laser gun. How much time it takes for the The, for the how much is the distance from here to that wall you can use a laser light so similarly now you can use light to break long distances how much time it takes for the light to come from a star to us will give you an idea about 
the measurement. Now there is another way of measuring it. One is using the how much is the influence of the gravitational force or the gravity of that particular star. I tell you, give you an idea about how big is the, that solar system. Let's say there's another solar system has a bigger star than a sun. Right? What is the distance between or what is the periphery of that particular system? Right? Circumference. You can dis decide based on the the mass of that star and that you can decide how much is the gravitational force and then you know how much it can influence the space then you know how big it's that particular system so there are a variety of different methods one can use these days anu here you wanted to ask a question yes is it possible to make a 3d footprint 3d what footprint Food printer, 3D food printer. Oh yeah, people are already a food printer. Yes, you know, so you can actually, you know, of course, it all depends on the kind of material that you want to make the food. Because it, if it is a kind of food that we make, we be different material we use in different concentration at different temperatures and different time points, right? So that kind of a food. You know, printer is somewhat difficult, but there are many, many already. Like right? you know, if you go to Tirupati, the ladu is made by a machine. It's nothing like food printer only, right? How a you know ladu is made? There are pulka making machines, right? Food printer means the reason you use the printer is it like you know you take in the computer and say this is what I want, and the material is in a box. That material flows in the in the machine, and then something comes out. That's why you use the word printer. But it's nothing but a, another robo, a small robo, right? So we have been using uh, machines for making food for a very long time. You can make even a cake, but only thing is very difficult because there are so many creative things you want to do in a cake, right? And you can't go on doing it because typically want to build, make robots or machines to make the same thing multiple copies. You want millions of ladoos you want to make every year. So instead of man, human making it, it is also clean hygiene. You as a machine, but I want to make a nice cake for my daughter's birthday. I don't want to give it to a machine. I want to do it myself, right? One is it has to be different than what machine can do. It had to have my touch to it, and also I want making only one of that kind of cake. I don't want to make hundreds of cakes saying that happy birthday, Sneha. Right? So no need to use a machine. Naomiya, do you want to ask? Naomiya, uh, yes, well, uh, sir, it's a rumor that a megalodon can jump up to the height of helicopters. Is it just is it just a rumor, or is it true that a megalodon could jump up to a, I mean, could leap up to a height of helicopters? Which one? Megalodon. A megalodon. Not a dinosaur. It's a shark. Shark. The world's largest shark that ever existed. Thank you. It never existed. Then anything to talk about it, right? It has never existed. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Which shark? I did not know. I don't know. Megalodon. Can it jump? What does it, your fact say? Really, megalodons live in the ocean. So how can they jump? I mean. Is it? Is there another kind of megalodon there that we don't know or something? Is there a land megalodon? I, I don't know. Uh, but Sahu, Saumya, I think we will check this up. I will. I will refer to it and get back to you because I have a book on sharks. I will read it and let you know later. Okay. Yeah, Bunny Ananya, did you want to ask a question? You said you wanted to ask. I have. Three questions. One, first question. One. Only one. Bunny. Only one. What What is the difference between climate and weather? Uh, ah, fantastic! Very good question. So, the it's like first. Let's talk about weather, right? Whether it's going to rain tomorrow, whether it's going to be sunny tomorrow or cloudy tomorrow, or uh, you know what will be the temperature tomorrow when you discuss. You know, decide that for you know it's a shorter time scale. What may happen tomorrow or day after tomorrow or such kind of time scale, and that's called weather. Climate is discussing the pattern, right? Here in tomorrow, you are not looking for a pattern. You know, what is the temperature tomorrow, or what is the you know whether it's going to rain tomorrow or not? 
you are looking for a pattern in climate you are looking for a pattern will be there will there be a rain every june every year it's climatic or what would be the temperature in june every year is climatic your today's temperature what is today you want to know it is weather but you want to know in the next 10 years will there be 25 degree centigrade on on november 14th every year in the next 10 years mm. if you want to make look at that prediction that is a pattern here you are looking for a pattern will the temperature be exactly the same on november 14th and what is that temperature for the next 10 years if you want to predict that's called climate so you can look at the climate from the past and also from the future right for example you can ask the temp what was the temperature when dinosaurs were living right in uh, let's say hyderabad right you know there was dinosaur fossils were there in uh, godavari district right you can ask the question what was the temperature in godavari district when dinosaurs were living are they cold blooded or warm blooded dinosaur cold blooded or warm blooded cold blooded they were telstrated hmm dinosaurs what are they cold blooded and they are such <laughs> large animals very large animals yeah. if they are also cold blooded right what the temperature what if the temperature is very cold what would they do say for example now temperature when it becomes very cold snakes come out of the rocks right under the rock because they want some warmer well weather they come out when it's sunny around 2 o'clock 3 o'clock if you go now or in december you know in hyderabad there under the rock there will be so many snakes they will come out because they want to get some warmth right it because they are cold blooded they cannot generate heat inside their body but dinosaur is so large how can it generate so much of heat to keep itself warm if the temperature is very cold so you can ask that question dinosaurs when they lived for so many millions of years so many millions of years ago what was the climate like so that is climate that's not weather Okay, Bunny. Now, Krishna or uh, Dhruv wants to ask a question. Youngest participant. Oh God! Please, please, quickly. We will end. Yes, Dhruv. Is is math you? Is math useful for in science? Yes. You can't do science without math. You can't even biology without math. <laughs> Okay. Sukanya, re Sukanya. So, how do you measure the heat and in the core of the earth? Because you can't send anything so deep in the earth. So this is by inference, right? So you can actually calculate how much of heat that we are getting from the uh, sun every day, how much it dissipated back to the atmosphere. and how much it sort of surface temperature changes and then you can uh, we know the size of the earth and if you say can see how what much of the surface uh, temperature is dependent on the heat in the core versus heat that is coming from the sun so based on that inference you can say how much of heat is still there in the core otherwise earth surface would have been even much you know colder than what it is even if it is fully sunny day in a summer right so that's how you can calculate thank you jashi one kid do kid wants to know what is time what is time they typed it in the chat box wow yes, very sister. philosophical yes, question sister. very philosophical question <laughs> so time has multiple meanings obviously because each one of us consider an event it happened how much time it took we say time right the the amount of time that it took for the event to happen or we can say in the time that takes to travel from one place to another place right so in each time can be of different type so in physics for example when they say time it is the distance traveled by light right it can be right whatever the distance traveled by light is time right and because light is the one which basically because absolute speed so everything can be related to the time or, or the distance that is traveled by light as a as a measure of time so that that's one i'm looking at it another way of looking at it is 
is the 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 duration right or, or the gap the gap between two events can be time right for example you know every time i you know close my eyes and open it or eyelid movement right and the the duration between the two the gap between the two such one can also be counted as time right which is it is is just periodical the stereotypic right so maybe every half a second i do it so that can be unit of time or nowadays what people do is they use what is known as atomic clock because the spin of the atoms around its own axis it's so you know precise and so you know repetitive you can use that as as a measure of time so there are variety of different ways of talking about time so time is more philosophical word there's no particular it's only a relative word it's, there's no absolute definition for time anybody else surya do you want to ask kamakshi why i have a question yeah, yes why is ammonium chloride used as smelling salts ammonium chloride used as a why is ammonium chloride used as smelling salts used as or called as smelling salts used as is it used as well i mean used as means what i mean because it smells it is called no like ammonia. why ammonia yeah. smell right Ammon yeah. why ammonia smells no no see the thing is we, we can smell certain things based on whether it is something which is you need to avoid or something which you need to be attracted to see we don't smell everything dogs can smell much more things than what we can smell right birds can smell or a fly house fly can smell something which we can't smell right for example can you smell sugar no sugar has smell but we can't smell you know glucose for example can you smell glucose unless it goes to no. your tongue okay. right so there are certain kinds of chemicals we can smell certain kinds we cannot smell the ammonia we can smell because ammonia is associated with waste we should avoid ammonia right so human many animals can smell ammonia because if there is lot of ammonia in sweat better don't go there it is not good because it's a waste place you know urine right or you know other waste material or dead body it produces lot of ammonia so that the kind of places normally you not supposed to go because if you go there you may get infections or you may get affected so better not to go there so that smell helps us to go avoid places where ammonia smell is coming so that's why we smell ammonia anything has ammonia as a compound they are one of the derivatives of uh, all the derivatives have ammonia in this base unit we can smell it right so yeah. whatever we can smell we can give a some name okay kamakshi do okay. you think i do i think we need to finish in another 5 10 minutes let me show one more movie and okay. then yeah all of you heard about this grandma stories right our grandpa stories the you know and uh, that is the bird you know a crow rather right the crow was thirsty it mm -hmm. went and look around for water there was a pitcher you know and there was a small amount of water in the pitcher and it couldn't put its you know beak and drink the water what it did it put the lots of heavy stones inside the bottle yeah but can you actually raise the water level by putting the stones yes the heavier the object is then the lighter stuff come to the top really right this put the stones and check once i tried yes of I course did. water displaces yes. but can you actually because, raise the water because the water also uh, occupies space and when the stones come the stones occupy the space in the pitcher and the water comes up because so more the water. stone you put the stones will be on the top ah, right yeah. one after the top water will still remain at the bottom so you can't get water coming out on the top right but you can do the experiment in a different way what if there is something floating on the surface right put lots of water in surface but still there is something not reachable and you can raise the levels of water 
by putting the stones, smaller ones, which can completely submerge in the water, then water level goes up, right? Yes. So look at this experiment. Then I'll ask you a question. This experiment where the crow knows what to do, it has already trained to do this. Okay. So here is a, a tube kind of a structure, and there is a small piece of meat which is floating on the water. Right. And then it's supposed to eat that and see what it does. Here is a crow, a rook. It already knows, it doesn't have to make an attempt also. It already knows that it cannot reach because it already done this before. It's also waiting for these stones, but it did something very extraordinary. Okay, it found, got it meat. What did it do? What was it doing? Anybody? It's it's raising, the raising the water levels. The okay, it was raising the water level, putting the stones. What was something surprise, something different it was doing? Anything strange? It was arranging the stones in an order. Like, you know, it, was, uh, it was arranging the stone in an order. It was putting it in one side, then it went to the other side and put the stone at the other side and then... It no, no, it, because its beak is so small, you can't have more than one stone at a time. It was picking no, one at a time. It was uh, changing its size. It, it picked up the larger stone. stones. Exactly. Who said this? Chinmay. Chinmay. Chinmay should get a prize. Okay. Done. So it was picking up the largest stone. Why it was picking up the largest stone? What's that reason? Because they because the larger ones can bring the water level up. So that means, I mean, you have all kinds of stones. You can put them in you know, 10 of smaller ones rather than 3 of the larger ones. Yes, yeah, so the heavier the object, the lighter ones come up. No, no. The reason is the number of attempts will be fewer, right? Yes. Instead of one at a time, one at a time, what you do? You take bigger one and to put two, three of those ones. You can't take very big one because your beak can't handle it. It, the, it may not even enter the, the vessel also. You take as big as possible and then put it inside. Right? And then you take, you make lesser number of attempts. That means you conserve your energy, energy also, right? You start doing one at a time, ten ones, right? Each one you have to pick up, bring it, put it inside and, and kind of stuff. So it's, it's an intelligent way of using the Technique. Use the technique. What is the technique? Putting the stone in the water. But it also using it in a very intelligent way by using less number of ones. So all of us use variety of tools, right? We use knife at home. We use uh, pen while writing, right? And uh, we use bicycle for you know going from one place to another place. We use all kinds of tools, techniques, but we use it also in an intelligent way. Right? For example, you want to carry your books, you want to carry your bags in a cycle. What do you do? You put a basket inside front of a bicycle or a, at the back of your bicycle. So you are also trying to, you know, you know, balance it well. And you also can cycle it well instead of putting your bag on your, on your backpack. Right? You can also keep it safely in the bicycle itself. So you are also using variety of different intelligent way of using tools. This is another intelligent way of using tools. Because it has a limited power. It doesn't have hands like us standing on two legs and doing all kinds of things. It has to do everything. It has to stand on its four legs. And also at the same time, you know, only beak it has to carry things. So maximum whatever it can do, it's doing it well. Right? So all animals are actually intelligent like us. Only thing is we have some different types of body, you know, parts, which can also use it, you know, add it to our mouth, our hand, you know, other things. I'll show you one more last movie and stop it here, okay? Now, this is an experiment with done. Let's say you uh, you have to do teamwork, okay? And your teachers will tell you two students make group, each one, one pair, you know, 
you had to do one experiment. Both of you, you know, oh. work together. And then I'll give you 10 chocolates, whoever does it well. What do you do with the 10 chocolate? Let's say there's one leader who gets the 10 chocolates in the group. What do you do? Do you take all the 10 chocolates? To yeah. One leader, 10 chocolate. No, no, let's say two students or let's say a team of five students did a work, mm. right? And then you did it well. And then your teacher gave you 10 chocolates. What do you do? We'll give two chocolates to each person. You divide okay. it. Okay. Let's say it's happened. You did the work yesterday. Results came tomorrow, next day. Right? And uh, the teacher gave you the chocolate. By the time students all got home and they were not coming back, what do you do? So I'll eat my share of two chocolates and save the eight for the next day. Okay. Wow. I will. A very, I very nice person. How many of you actually do this? I'll How many of you think that you I'll eat all the chocolate myself? I'll eat the chocolate and save some for later. I'll eat only two of them and very good. It's, it's true. Actually, it's true that all of us, we do what is known as we share the reward more or less equally with others. And very few people cheat, right? Particularly kids don't cheat. Adults cheat sometimes. They want all the money for themselves, right? You know, so the you know that's all you have thieves and you know people who make you know, all kinds of things. In you know, the, you know, older people are generally you know develop all kinds of problems. But that's also very small in number, right? If you go you know in a train, there are thousands of people. No, you don't know any of them. They are maybe coming from another city, another state. They may speak different language, you know, and they don't know you. You don't know them. But you can still very happily, you know, be the same train thinking that no one is going to do any harm to me or take my luggage. If I go to a bathroom and, and by the time I come back, you know, my luggage is already gone. You don't cheat. Because most of the people are good people around the world. And they don't cheat. So you may ask the question, is it because we are thinking that we should not teach? They cheat or is it because naturally we are born in such a way that we don't cheat others? So it's actually so happened that in all animals, not only in human, uh, whenever they live in a group, they always cooperate with each other. They always share the food with each other. Cheating is very, very rare in the world. Even in human world is also very rare. That's why if someone cheats, it becomes a news. Right? Because it's a rare thing that happens. Right? So there are everybody's good in the world. Everybody wants to help each other. Right? And and this is not only in human, it's also there in other animals. How do you know how to test this? Right? Here is a simple experiment with two monkeys. The monkeys came from two different places. They didn't know each other before. And what the job work is simple. Here is a jar. Jar has some nuts. You know what is this nut is? Anybody? The walnut. The walnut. Is it a walnut? Hmm? It's a walnut. Hazel. Is it a walnut? walnut or hazelnut? Hazelnut. Hazelnut. You don't know. It's in, uh, generally available in Europe. Okay. Anyway, there are six nuts in this. You, you can see some here. And it's a covered jar. And the monkey is supposed to open the jar and take out the nuts to eat. Right? But to open the jar, it needs some tool. Right? What you do is, you do, you keep here. Okay? There is a stone and the jar. The stone is in one room, jar in another room. These two rooms are have a glass, you know, wall. And a small window. You can see that window. And there are two different monkeys. One monkey with the stone, another monkey with the jar with the nut. But without the stone, it can't open it. It's looking for the stone, but stone it can't reach. Other monkey has a stone. See what other monkey does. 
it gives the stone to the other monkey. It's, a, it's called teamwork now. Mm -hmm. They are cooperating with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Because it gave the stone. Otherwise, it, you know, it would not have been able to open it. Now it's trying to open it. See, it's even helping, you know, giving the stone because it slipped it's from its hand and kind of stuff. See now, it opened it, it's removing one by one. There are six hazelnuts. See, the experiment is Keep there are three, the two monkeys are in two different rooms. They are not seeing each other. It's unlikely that they're going to meet again. Right? Although it gave the stone to open the jar, the other monkey could have easily carried all the six nuts. Right? It's, it's self protected because the other monkey is not going to come and fight with it because it's you know away from each other. There's a there's a glass wall which is protecting it. Right? But see what it does. It actually gave three nuts, exactly three. It's not only it shared, it equally shared. Right? So, it's some, in evolution, what we call as, even some of the behavior that all of us have, it also came from other animals because human is also evolved over time from other animals. And during that time, we carried all these properties. The way we, you know, metabolize our sugar with the help of insulin in the body, of the way we breathe, the way, you know, the hemoglobin takes the oxygen to all parts of the body, right? The way our bones develop, the way our muscles function, everything is already there in other animals, like a mouse or a monkey or a thing. Similarly, whatever happens in our brain, it's also similar to what other animals can do, including something as complex as cooperating with each other, sharing equal amount of food, right? Okay, I'll stop here. Any more questions? Shashi, there's one question one boy wanted to ask. He wanted to know why if argon and krypton are inert gases, they are dangerous to humans. The Some reason... They are, they are actually inert gases. They do not mix, obviously, chemically, you know, one. The reason they are dangerous is the concentration, relative concentration of oxygen goes down when such kind of gases are present, right? So, because they do not mix with anything else, their relative concentration will remain exactly the same. It will affect our oxygen carrying capacity. So, because of which, you know, we will have a problem in our uh, cells or in our lungs and everywhere. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's Soumya. Soumya asked that question. Soumya, clear? Done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have another meeting at 12 o'clock. I also need okay. to go. Hope you all enjoyed. It was good. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It was very interesting. Bye, everyone. Bye, sir. Bye, everyone. Happy children's day to everyone. Happy children's day. Happy children's day. And happy day. Don't forget Diwali. Happy Diwali. Bye, sir. Bye, auntie. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. You can continue for some more time if you want to talk to your friends, okay? Bye, everyone. Bye. I'll leave now. Okay. Bye. All tomorrow. Thank you, Shashi. Thank you. It was great. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for Bye. this opportunity. Thank you, Krishna. Bye. 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 Happy Children's Day to all of you. Happy, Happy Children's Day. Day. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you too. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.